Good morning. I'm Dr. Frank Phillips, and I'd like to welcome you to Upstate Carolina Medical Center in Gaffney, South Carolina. I'm an orthopedic surgeon who's been practicing in Gaffney for about the last 20 years. Today, we're going to have an inside look at total knee replacement surgery. This is part of the Virtual Surgery Insider Project, a collaboration of the South Carolina Hospital Association and the South Carolina Department of Education. What we're going to do today, I've got a couple of models here that we'll look at. This is a model of a, uh, of a knee. Here's the femur, which is the thigh bone. Down here is the tibia, which is the leg bone. Underneath here is the patella, the kneecap. When you look at this knee here, on this side of the knee, this is a normal appearing joint surface. Over on this side is a joint surface that's been worn down as a result of arthritis. There's a lot of other structures in the knee that we'll be uh, taking out during the course of the surgery. Uh, one of the important structures, and I have a little, uh, I've, I've done this lady's knee on the other side, and we know what her knee looks like, that she has some damage to the uh, cartilages here as well. So what we'll do is we'll take this knee here, using a series of guides, we'll make some very precise cuts in the bone. You can see these cuts on the end of the thigh bone, this cut on the top of the leg bone, and then we'll put in these metal and plastic parts and voila we have a knee replacement. A few other questions while we're working here. Um, from Clover High School, before the surgery do you cut off the circulation to the knee? Well that's what the, the uh, use of the tourniquet was for. You saw how we uh, wrap that rubberized bandage around the knee to try to squeeze out as much blood as we can and then we put the tourniquet up um, try to keep the tourniquet about a hundred millimeters of mercury higher than what their blood pressure is. We came up with the size that we wanted and, and there's a whole variety. You saw on that back table we have all those parts back there. A lot of those are just the, the, uh, the guides for the different size, the sizes of knees. We'll cut off the anterior or the, the anterior surface, the top of the uh, femur, and the undersurface as well. From Clover High School, is recovery time longer for older patients and younger patients? Um, age is always a factor, more so uh, the physiologic age, how old the patient's body is rather than what the calendar says that they are. A lot of it also has to do with how uh, damaged the knee is before, and that's probably the bigger factor is uh, the amount of damage that's in the knee. From Northwestern High School, explain how the post works instead of the cruciate ligaments. Okay, these are the cruciate ligaments. Here's the anterior cruciate ligament right here, and on the back side, here's the posterior cruciate ligament. Posterior cruciate ligament runs from the back of the tibia to the front of the femur and the anterior cruciate ligament from the front of the tibia to the back of the femur. They keep the leg, the tibia, the leg here from sliding back and forth on the femur. Now this prosthesis that I have here really doesn't have the central post. It's a little bit different type of design. But that post would sit right in this spot right here. And this post would then go up into this area here and with this being a little bit different design, what that post then would do, would, it would be to mechanically block the knee from going back and forth. 